is the word. Welcome back to the show once again, guys. As you can tell, I'm super excited that you're here because today we have something special in store for you. We got a 5.4 liter, four valve, dual overhead cam engine that has a couple different noises going on here. And we're gonna allow you to listen to each one of those noises and then we're gonna pull you into the engine and we're gonna show you exactly what failed and is causing that noise. Not only that, but we're also going to snake you through into the oil pan so we can show you the one thing that most people overlook when repairing this kind of failure. Now this four valve engine is very similar in design to its counterparts, the two valve and the three valve engines. It's a modular design, there's a lot of cross pollination of parts going on here. So as you can imagine, the failures migrate from one engine to the next. This is going to apply to a lot of you out there. Let's go over the vehicle and check it out. Now this 5.4 liter four valve dual overhead cam engine has quite a rattle at startup and then also has a chain dragging noise like a, like a roller coaster chain um, uh, whenever it's running. So let's go ahead and start it. It's been sitting, I don't know, eight, 10 hours. Uh, we'll show you how it sounds on the startup. Here's the noise once the engine's warmed up. It's a constant chain type noise. So I'm pretty sure we have some broken guides in here causing all these noises and um, concerns for this customer. Okay, the front cover is off now. So we can go ahead and take a look at what I found and uh, go over a few things on there. Now, on the driver's side, cams and the passenger side cams I took, a, I took a quick look at them to see if there's any abnormal wear and they actually look like they're in really good shape so I'm not worried about any kind of uh, clearance issues either in the cam caps rod caps or the main bearing caps causing the low oil pressure I think the whole problem lies in the timing components here so we'll go ahead and start on the passenger side here and you can see up top here, it's just a regular sprocket. There's no phaser or VCT solenoids on the four valve engines. Simple sprocket, they last forever. So we're gonna leave that alone. We're gonna change the, tension, uh, the uh, chains on here and the rest of the timing drive components like the guides and the tensioners and all that. And here's why, okay? We know these tensioners are the same ones in the three valve that blow out. The um, driver's side here is definitely blown out. You can see it right there up top squishing out. So we're definitely going to change those. They're kind of one time use only anyways. But we're looking for their reason for the noise. And you can look over here and there's plastic right here that hooks onto this metal backing for this particular guide. Okay, and the four valve engines. And that plastic should run all the way down so that the chain can ride over that instead of the metal. You don't want metal to metal noise, okay? Look where that piece ended up. Chunked off, blew out, and I'm sure there's a bunch of other small pieces down in there also from this guide literally coming apart. So that's where we're getting our constant noise uh, going down the road, metal on metal, not good, okay? Let's see if I can get a look in there. Now this chain is pretty tight. It still has tension on it. So I think that tensioner is fine, but of course, like I said, you always change them whenever you pull them off of here. Now, by contrast, let's look at this side over here on the, the driver's side. We know that tensioner is blowing out, okay? Look how much slop there is in this chain. Yeah, big time. And all that slop caused by the blown out tensioner, which he let go for years um, because it quieted up in a few seconds, did just this. Slap that flap for three to five seconds and look what it did. It started chunking off all kinds of pieces of that guide. 
You see the plastic, it's all missing in there. And I'm sure there's more as we go up, maybe towards the top there. But look at this. That's a lot of slack. So that's gonna beat on this. It's gonna beat on other components. Luckily, this chain uh, in this particular design did not start slapping against the um, front cover. I've seen them wear into the front cover on there. And the uh, oil pump too, right here and here as it goes across, it'll wear into it. And it'll tear up the oil pump, so. But yeah, that is what I found on this uh, particular engine. So if you've never seen a four valve engine apart, you can see they're kind of similar to the um, three valve and two valve engines, just a little bit more complicated and a little bit more heavy duty is what I found out on these. Um, we generally don't have to pull these apart. This is pretty much my first one I've gone this deep into. But again, it's the same thing basically as the other ones. Uh, that I've worked on every day, it seemed, over the years. So, we're going to have to end up pulling the pan down there because I'm sure that oil pickup tube is just full of these metal, or these, uh, these plastic pieces. Matter of fact, let's see if I can get you down in here. I drained the oil already. Um, so, we're going to look down in here. That's the big piece right there. So they made their way deeper inside there already. So we're going to have to go inspect that and make sure there's no uh, chunks down in there. Because this is not the whole thing. We know that. I think it's missing, you know, 8 inches of it. So where's it at? It's down in the pan. So at this point, if you see broken guides on your engine, 2 valve, 3 valve, 4 valve, doesn't matter. You got to pull that pan. You gotta clear the screen on there and get these remnants out of there. Okay, we're gonna take you up into the oil pan through the drain plug hole right here, and we're gonna try to show you the best I can. I know the video quality is not the best. Um, we're gonna try to get this camera to lay down like you see there. And that right there, that dome looking thing, is the oil pickup for the oil pump so we have the big piece of the guide there you see it's huge huge piece down here it's wedged against the pickup in the pan and there's also there's another piece behind that and then if we go towards the screen on there you look up in there um we turn the brightness down a bit maybe um you can see all those chunks up inside of there too. So they're, you know, actually blocking the screen. And we saw that one guide was just beat um, over time. So I'm sure there's a lot of small pieces up in there that we just can't see because I can't get this thing to show us. But yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of pieces in there. Looks like there's a lot of pieces up in there. And that's where our low oil pressure is coming from. There's a lot of blockages down here, so it's better off that we drop the pan and fix it, fix it right. Okay, so I brought down the oil pan, and this right here just really illustrates um, why you should pull the pan anytime you have a chain that's been wearing on the guides forever, or you have broken guides. Like this one right here, you see like pieces down in here. Lots of chunks down here, small, big pieces. But there's also, get the oil passed here. Look at all that, all those speckles down in there. You know what that is? That's aluminum from the upper guide on the passenger side we saw earlier that was uh, missing all these pieces. Well, the chain was wearing against the aluminum and she sent in fine particles down in here. So, real good idea to pull the pan. <laughs> Whenever you have extended wear like that or broken pieces. And over here, pickup, same thing. Now that's down and out of there. Let's try to get a look up inside of here. I know some of these pieces dislodged when um, you know I was pulling it down. There's more in here, but 
You can see the screen usually does not get damaged, okay? But there'll be pieces up in there, and more so at different times, right? Depending what's floating around in there. And it's gonna clog the actual pickup. You can see this one's laying flat against it in there, blocking part of the pickup on there. So I imagine other times it's blocking more with the pieces that are floating around the pan, and guess what? We're not gonna be able to have the volume of oil coming up through there to feed the pump. And we're gonna have low oil pressure at times. So all good, good checks whenever you have this kind of issue. All right, she's all done. Let's go ahead and try her out. Start it up, take a listen. Oh yeah. Listen to that puppy purr. Okay, there you have it. The engine is fixed, nice and quiet, start up, running. It's like a brand new engine. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little log of the failures this 5.4 liter, four valve, dual overhead cam engine was experiencing. So you can kind of get an understanding of how it should sound and how it will sound when there is a failure. And you can kind of tell the chain rattle, dragging type noise. Um, exactly what it is, so you know if you need, if you need to go in there and uh, get to it right away. Um, that's the key here. A lifter, yeah, it can, it can pump up and be fine after a startup, but something like this where the tensions are blown and then the guides start coming apart and chunks are falling in the pan, they're pl plugging the oil pickup on there, it's not going to be good for the whole engine. So when, once you start hearing that chain rattle noise or even that startup rattle noise from the tensions being blown out, you really should look into fixing the engine as soon as possible. I'll see you guys next time.